Hello fantastic people, I hope you're doing great. Today I would like to show you how to create simple combat system with regular and strong attacks. Let's get to it. I'm starting with those two models and a simple character movement. For our attacks we'll need some animations, so let's navigate to mixamo.com. You can get their free animations, and yes, you can use them in your commercial projects if you do not redistribute them. It is as simple as uploading your character and searching for the animation you want. By the way, in the next tutorials we'll learn how to create a character and rig it for using in Mixamo. For my animations I'm selecting this combo animation which I will split into multiple animations. I adjust the trim sliders to have a very quick, smooth attack. Once I'm happy with the result, I simply click the download button, change format to FBX for Unity and for skin select no skin and then just simply download the animation. Then for the convenience I rename the file and exactly the same way I prepare the second animation, which is the last attack in the combo animation. Then I download it to exactly the same folder and as well rename it. Then importing those animations is as simple as drag and dropping them in my animation folder in project window. Then after making sure the character rig is selected in the hierarchy I'm opening the animator window. Then I'm creating two simple trigger parameters, one for simple attack and one for the strong attack. Then I click on both animations and rename them from mixamo.com to simple attack and strong attack. Then I drag and drop them into the animator and create all necessary transitions. The whole idea is to use our new triggers to transition from idle and walking to the attack and strong attack animations. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can check this tutorial about animations. In the play mode, I'm testing the animations by setting the triggers manually in the animator window. I see that the simple animation speed is a little bit too small, so I'm changing it to 1.5, then retesting it once again. It's time to give our character a sword. In order for it to move properly, I drag and drop it in the hierarchy window under the bone responsible for moving hand. Once that's done, it's just a matter of adjusting the position and rotation of the sword. I'm retesting the animations with sword in hand. Everything looks alright. It's time to create a script that will be responsible for handling our attack. I call it player attack. Now I will have to add some new actions to my input actions. If you haven't had time yet to become a friend with the new input system, you can have a look at that tutorial in the corner. The first action will be called attack and it will be bound to a simple left mouse click. For the strong attack we'll use the binding with one modifier, that will be left mouse click when we hold the left shift button. Don't forget to save your asset. Make sure that the player attack script that we created and the player input component are on the character. For the behavior let's select the set messages, make sure your input actions are in place and that you are using the right default map. The player input will send us messages that can be handled by creating the methods on and the name of the action, plus those methods have to have the parameter of type input value. As you see using the player input component is pretty convenient. For now to make sure that we set up everything correctly let's just log the message to the console. It turns out we have a little problem. Everything seems to work properly with attack, however strong attack triggers both the attack message and strong attack message. It turns out there is no easy fix for that issue in the current version of the input system. So we'll cheat and download the pre-release version of the input system from the GitHub. Then we simply unzip it, then in Unity in Package Manager we click on the small plus icon and select Add from Disk. Inside the downloaded package we navigate to Packages, Community Input System and select the package.json file. This will import the package. It turns out there is an even newer version, one for one. Let's install it. And our issue is fixed, we don't have to do anything extra. 
let's connect our animations. For that, we need a variable to store the animator and then assign it in the awake method. I'm using the get component in children because my animator is on the rig which is under the character parent object. Now I replace the simple logs we had with setting the actual triggers on the animator. The simple attack for a regular attack and strong attack for the strong attack. Beautiful, everything works as expected. Time to handle attacking the enemy. Under the character I create empty object and call it attack area. Then I add box collider to it and adjust its size to cover the area I want the enemies to be hitting. Of course I also mark it as trigger. Now let's create attack area script. Inside of it let's store a list of damageables of type idamageable. That's an interface we'll create in a second. Now I'm creating folder for my interfaces and the idamageable interface. Inside of it we'll need just one simple method damage, that will take the damage amount integer as a parameter. Now let's get back to our attack area script. We need to import our interface's namespace and now add two methods, on trigger enter and on trigger exit. In both of those methods I check if the object that collided with our trigger has the idamageable script. If it has it, on trigger enter I add it to our list and on trigger exit I remove it from the list. Of course assuming that it already is in the list. Then I make my list public and use the power of my IDE to simplify the code. Of course we cannot forget to initialize the list. Then I'm realizing I misspelled damageable everywhere and I'm fixing the typo. It's time to get back to our player attack script. I didn't find an easy way to add the animation events to the animations downloaded from Mixamo, so instead I'm going to indicate the moment when the enemies should be hit by using two timers, the damage after time and strong damage after time. Then I also create a variable damage to indicate how much damage should be dealt to the enemies. Now I'm creating simple coroutine. If you would like to learn more about coroutines, you can check this tutorial out. I call the coroutine hit and give it one parameter of type boolean, strong. I start the coroutine by waiting for amount of time equal to one of the timers I created before, depending on the value of the strong variable. Now I'm creating a variable to store the reference to our attack area. I will need it for the information about the damageables in range. I use that information to iterate through all of the objects in the damageable area, or rather the attack area. Then to all of those objects I deal damage depending on the value of the strong parameter. Let's now create a script for our enemy. Let's call it simple enemy. It has to extend the mono behavior type and of course implement our idamageable interface and then implement the damage method. For now, to make sure that everything is set up correctly, let's just debug a message saying how much damage has been dealt to that enemy. Let's get back for a moment to our player attack script. We forgot to call our coroutine hit on attack and on strong attack. Calling the coroutine in our case is not as intuitive as usually. What you see on the screen now will not work. This time we have to provide the name of the coroutine as a string and then after a comma add the parameter. To set up our enemy we simply give him box collider and adjust its size. Then we add the simple enemy script we created moment ago. Now we need to move back for a moment to our character. Our player attack script has now some variables that we have to set. The timers, damage and the reference to attack area. Everything works as expected but the enemy lacks animations. Let's do that now. I select the mannequin object and go into the animation window. I create the animation, press the record button, 
and then adjust the rotation of the main part of the mannequin at the different keyframes. This gives me very simple but also very nice damaged animation. I open the animator window and create the empty state for the idle animation. Then I make all the necessary transitions and set them up. Of course for that I will also need a trigger parameter that I call damaged. Now in the simple enemy script I create the variable to store the animator and as usually I grab it in the awake method. Then in the damage method I simply set the damaged trigger. Fantastic! Everything works well. Almost. You may not see it but we are able to trigger the attack multiple times in the middle of the attack. So we have to make one small change to our attack script. Let's introduce new variable of type boolean is attacking. And then on attack and on strong attack let's return before doing anything if the variable is set to true. Then in our hit method let's wait once again after we damage the enemies to make sure our attack has finished. Then at the beginning of hit let's set is attacking to true and at the very end let's set it to false. It will get the job done. However, it would be much better and nicer to use the animator and state information to know if the animation has finished. Thank you so much for giving me this 15 minutes of your time. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel, liking this video and writing a comment because that really helps pleasing the algorithm gods and hopefully, maybe because of your comment, like and subscription, they will allow me to grow the channel a little bit quicker. So have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye.